our first story, police reinforcement was brought in to beef up security at the Asokwa District Court in Kumasi, where three suspects in the fatal shooting at the NDC Regional Office two weeks ago were arraigned. Well, agitated relatives of Abdul Wasiu, who died in the incident, masked up at the court and subsequently attacked sympathizers of the suspects before and after proceedings. The court denied bail to the three who pleaded not guilty to a charge of conspiracy to commit murder, having turned themselves in to the police late last week. Anaya Ojima has more in the following report. People had to be set before being allowed into court four, presided over by his lordship Abbas Mohammed. Family of the late Abdul Wasi, who was shot dead by elements within the NDC militia group, Hawks, vented their anger at party supporters at the court. They allege some party members who turned up at today's proceedings have since the killing of their relatives sought to defend suspects in their utterances. Dizid's brother, Mohammed Tanku, justifies the action. After killing our brother, we have somebody who called my sister, threatened my sister that she is going to kill my sister like they kill my brother. So if as they are here, they are threat to people. So we don't want to see them. So you think the police have been unfair to you? They are unfair to us. They have to arrest them. Because they know they know where the rest are. They know where they are. Who knows? The police people. They know where the rest are. They know where the rest are. So they have to go arrest them. Prosecution told the court the three and others who at large had gone to the party office with arms to settle scores with party tax force, another militia group. Defense counsel Evans Amankwa, however, disagreed. He explained one of the suspects, Ibrahim Dauda, is a deputy constituency youth organizer for NDC in Tafu Pankrono and Regional Security Committee member. Mr. Amankwa suggested Dauda had been invited by the NDC regional chairman. Nana Akwesi Augustus to a meeting at the party office. He said the suspect was supposed to attend the meeting with members of the Hawks, hence the presence of another suspect, Samuel Ejay. The lawyer further indicated the third suspect, Abdul Ghanil, wasn't at the party office on the day of the shooting. He therefore pleaded for bail for his clients, which the court refused and remanded into police custody to reappear on the 14th of this month. You see, the fact of the matter is that this is something that has happened. And nobody is happy with that, not at all. But the people that have been arrested, if you, if you, if you read the facts, they have no connection whatsoever with uh, the offense that was committed. And we're of the opinion that one, they have no inclination to the offense that was committed, they should have been granted bail. And it is the police that will take a position on that. Uh, sorry, it is the court that will take a final decision on that. So what are you, you and your clients, what are you doing to assist in the investigation? We, 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 would, we would be able, we would be available, if the police wants any further questioning or whatever it is, we would be available to give it to them. Anything that we know about this crime, we would, we would let the court have them. Nanea Ojima reporting. Here's an update on day 10 of the Ayawaso West Wogon Violence Commission's work. A resident of La Baoleshi who witnessed the violence that marred the Ayawaso West Wogon by election has blamed the National Security SWAT unit for gunshot injuries suffered by persons in the constituency on January 31. National Security Minister Kandapa, in his testimony, you will recall, uh, before the Justice Short Commission stated, that the unit had fired only six warning shots, which did not injure anyone in the process. Benjamin Tego, however, told the commission more than two persons were hit by the shots. Security analyst Dr. Kwesi Enin and General Secretary of the Governing NPP were also at the commission to speak about the phenomenon of political party militias. Here's more. Rasta Boys is a group, Invisible Forces, Bamba Boys. The existence of political party militias have been identified as the root cause of the violence that marred the by election. President Akufuado, during the State of the Nation address, asked that the two leading parties meet to decide steps to dissolve the violent groups affiliated to them. Dr. Enin, however, believes it may take more than that. These groups have become economic groups. 
they've been infiltrated by criminals. They have evidence, recorded statements of those who promised them goodies. He argues it's important for confidence in the security agencies to be restored. We shouldn't be shy as a nation to say, probably the UN should come and help be the honest broker or the African Union. Operators of the national security have been accused of being responsible for the violence and multiple gunshots that characterize the election. Dr. Enin wants the states to pay attention to what appears to be a trend of handing weapons to national security operatives. The governing MPP, whose candidate won the by-election, has been accused of owning vigilante groups whose members have been absorbed into state security apparatus. General Secretary John Buedu, however, told the commission the groups are sometimes beneficial to the party. I personally, if I had not had the services of these young men with me on that day, because we were all running with the police to, to take over, it would have been catastrophic. I wouldn't know what would have happened. He wants the police to remain firm in enforcing the laws of the country once political parties disband their vigilante groups. The security agencies to assert their authority. There's a need for them to be fair and firm. The commission has so far been told a number of empty bullet shells have been obtained from various individuals, with the police still making efforts to retrieve some more. Detective Sule Jalo, who on Friday led the commission on the tour of the crime scene, says all pieces of evidence have been forwarded to the police forensics department. Certain pieces of evidence at the shooting site. And forwarded same to the divisional crime officer. Various witnesses who have testified before the commission have given conflicting accounts on a number of gunshots that could be attributed to the SWAT unit. National Security Minister Kandapa had told the commission his men fired only six warning shots and did not injure anyone. The, uh, our boys then gave some six warning shots, which they tell me did not hit anybody. Benjamin Tego, an eyewitness, disagrees. One guy, one man, young man, had it on the leg. I think on the, I don't know whether the right or the, le the left leg. And then one had it on the shoulder. The other one received it by the waist. And there was this other young guy. He uh, is very young. The bullet enter into, I mean, his head, his hand. The commissioner ever had some questions. Yes, my they were Lord. just firing by heart. The way they were firing. Yes, yes. and yet it didn't hit anybody hey. to cause death. No, death didn't come in. The commissioner will continue with its proceedings on Tuesday. Well, let's move on. And the uh, national organizer of the MPP, Samuel Euku, has uh, revealed that the party will take steps to resolve all disagreement between party members. He said the party has taken steps based on President Ekufuado's pledge to disband party militias and have been meeting with various party supporters across the country on the need to disband all such groups if they exist. Samir Uku made the statement in WA after meeting supporters of the party in the Savannah and Upper West regions. Joy News Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafik Salam now reports. The visit of the national organizer of the new Petoti Party, MPP, Samir Uku and some national executives to the Savannah and Upper West regions is in twofold. First is to touch base with the party, get feedback from policies of the government and also listen to some of their concerns with a view to finding solution to them. The second reason, and which is major, is to meet with youth of the party in a bid to stem down the issue of party vigilantism. Sami say the party is taking a cue from what transpired last month at the NDC headquarters in Kumasi where one person was shot dead. 
we don't want event to occur, like it occurred at the NDC regional office where one person died. We want to take steps that if there are even people who are not happy with one or two internally, who take steps to address it before it grows to become a monster. I will also pretend that we haven't had bad publicity in the past because of the activities of some of our young men. And that is why as party leaders, we've taken the bull by the horn, we decided to hit the grounds ourselves. My national men organizer, national youth leader, national Nasara, myself so that's the party's organizational structure being moved to the upper west he said the party is standing toe to toe with president ikufo adu to put the lead on party vigilantism and the idea of disbanding we our position has been that it's a wonderful call and we will take steps to nip any activity in the bar However, you also have to engage them. Disbanding, I can disband with my mouth that today there's Azoka. I've disbanded Azoka. Tomorrow you form the Hawks. So what it means is that you don't even mean what you are saying. And that's what, that's what we want to differentiate from. But And we stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with our president and in his vision and his quest to ensure that with politically motivated violence is something that is completely discarded. It happened to us in Talensi, happened to us in Cherpone, happened to us in Amenfi West, happened to us in Akwetia and Etiwa. And the president has decided that even though we were victims in the past, it's time for all of us to sit around the table. So it's been a very good initiative, and so far it's been wonderful. Not, not to... While the meeting was going on, some members of the party from the Nandolo Keleo constituency held placards calling for the reinstatement of the suspended chairman of the constituency, Martin Andonia. You cannot resolve matters fire for fire. And so that's why you realize that they've all come down uh, unlike when you came at first. And so this is a matter we are resolving tonight and tomorrow morning. So I'm very confident that by the time we leave this region, we will have a better opportunity to tell a better story. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wah! Now away from the partisan politics, men who beat their spouses are usually under the influence of alcohol. That is according to the Gender and Social Protection Minister, Cynthia Morrison, who says violence between spouses has proven difficult to deal with. On the 8th of March, women across the world will be celebrated for their contribution to the world with calls for increased gender equality. The head of the International Women's Day, Joy News' Gender Desk, has been engaging the minister on how far we have come as a country as far as domestic violence is concerned. Now, she says more education is needed. Domestic violence is a, uh, something that we, we should all get involved and educate. Yesterday night when I went to visit Kofi, there was this woman, Ephraim's mother. Ephraim had um, ulcers and he's like virtually um, leopard. All his fingers are off now. His toe nails are all off now because the father said the mother should not take him to the hospital and that he was going to go herbal. And he's, he's, he's been bandaged almost every part of his body. If you see him, it's a sorry, sorry thing. But the father said, don't take him to the hospital. The mother brought the boy to the hospital. In over two months now, the father has not stepped in the hospital. I called him. He said he was not going to go. We reported to Dobsu. They called him. He went once, and he hasn't gone again. So yesterday, they told me they, they are going to send an arrest to get him. I asked the mother yesterday. The boy is about to be discharged. Are you ready to go home? And she's afraid to go back home. And I asked her, does he beat you? He said, yes, occasionally. But these days, he doesn't beat me physically. But the emotional trauma that I'm going through in that house, do you want him arrested? There was a pause. So that is where we are. If the, the, the woman who is being battered, even if the man is being assaulted, and he says, no, don't, you can't follow up. But if it has got to do with a child, that one, we can come in and say that this is a child, and so we'll defend. But when it comes to um, spouses, the man will be arrested, and the woman will come and tell you that if you arrest him, who is going to take care of my children? So I want you to release him. How do you think we can deal with this problem? Conscientize the people to know that you are not safe. You see somebody has been killed by their husband who went through similar things. You want to die before. It's not that we want to just take um, arrest up, your husband, but at least if... It, uh, some, a lot of men who do that, they do it after they are drunk. 
And it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing. But once a woman says, don't go ahead, you can't do anything to it. So then what should women do? It's for conscientizing women. And yeah, they know it. Some of them don't know that at a point you can just report your husband or report your spouse if they're abusing you. Not that they'll be arrested, but just so they will be counseled, for example. They don't know. I have a Is case here. A yeah, the woman came back to say that the family says if she doesn't withdraw the case, then she shouldn't come back to the family again because it is a disgrace to send your husband to do. So we need education, all of us need education. Especially we should give it to our growing children, especially the, the young men, to let them know that once you marry, that wife be, is part of you, your better half. You don't beat up the person because she's weak. And the women also, you don't beat up your husband because you think he's a nice gentleman, he wouldn't beat you, wouldn't touch you. Some men are strong, but yet when their wives hit them, they refuse to hit back, which is a very good thing. But it doesn't mean that the woman has a right to hit the husband. Nobody has a right to hit each other. Yes. And that's it for the news. Indeed. There's more coming up when we do the newspaper headlines. And then, of course, showbiz and AM talk all follows right here. Stay with us.